All right, YouTube, Hurricane Matthew is still moving towards Florida after ripping through the Caribbean. Uh, it looks like it's on track to impact the coast fairly severely. Evacuations are underway. Uh, anyone who's not evacuating, honestly, unless they're deep inland and they've, oh, you know, made an artificial mountain underneath their property, they're probably an idiot. Um, you're going to get flooded out, possibly lose power, end up with, you know, a broken window slashing you to pieces as 100 mile an hour wind gusts uh, cause debris to fly in your window and literally cut you in half or something like that. So yeah, probably better idea to just leave. You know, I know people from like northern states who go on vacation in Florida. Well, people in Florida, maybe this is your opportunity to take like a weekend getaway or something to a cooler climate. Go see Colorado. Come and come and see New England. Just don't uh, just don't retire here and displace a bunch of people and build a second home to facing our mountains, please. Uh, but yeah, Hurricane Matthew is. Uh, appears to have slowed down to the point where it was almost stalled out for a while. It's very slowly making its way there, and people in Florida are rightly concerned. I'd probably be concerned, too, if that was coming. And I was like, hmm, well, I live two blocks away from the beach, and I live six inches above sea level. I think this might be a problem. The unfortunate part being the highest terrain in Florida is still not particularly high terrain. Throughout most of... of the lower two-thirds of Florida, it's really a little more than a sand embankment upon which some rocks and trees happen to be located. There's hardly a point that's more than five feet above sea level in the whole southern half of the state. Uh, some of it is <laughs> essentially at sea level. It's basically swamp or sandbar, and that's really what this state is. Uh, when people talk about climate change, they often talk about Florida because of this. Now, I don't care if climate change is largely man-made, largely natural. I don't even bother talking about that anymore. It is clear, though. Uh, there's more ice melting, and Florida's basically a lost cause. If you're living there now, 50 years from now, if you're young, uh, you probably won't be living there because you'll be underwater. Uh, either that or your house hopefully has stilts or something like that. Uh, with Hurricane Matthew, though, <clears throat> you get a storm surge coming off the ocean. That'll probably destroy anyone that's within a couple blocks of the ocean, honestly. It's going to be heavy rainfall. It's actually funny. Uh, I was down in Florida. I uh, lived briefly in Tampa for a summer. Every day the weather's the same. It's hot, humid, sunny, and oppressive. And then once or maybe twice a day, you get a 10-minute thunderstorm that just dumps waves and waves of water on you like there's no tomorrow. And then within an hour, it's basically dried out. It's never not humid, but the ground is like dry uh, because they get blistering sun and it's just constantly hot. It just The vapors waft right off of that sand, which is, they don't really have soil. It's basically just sand, no matter where in the state you happen to be going. <clears throat> it's a very strange place, uh, honestly. It's much stranger than like southern Texas. That feels more a little bit like you know, you're inland even, you know, when you get a little way from the ocean in southern Texas, you're actually a couple hundred feet above sea level. looks flat, but it's actually at an angle. In Florida, you're not really above sea level, <laughs> no matter where you happen to be. Unless you're in a building, uh, you know, like a skyscraper or on a highway overpass or something like that, that's the, the highest points in Florida have nothing to do with natural structures. They have to do with buildings that man has created. It's not that way here, you know, for somebody who was born and raised in New England. Of course, mountains are everywhere. When I was a little kid, I just assumed the whole world was kind of like that. You know, everyone had winter. Everywhere there's mountains. Didn't really realize, of course, a place like Florida could actually exist. It was like something out of a, a, a weird dream or something. Partially dystopian, partially utopian. Yeah, the palm trees are nice and the, the bromeliads everywhere. They grow, I mean, like the urn plant I've got growing behind me. They grow wild down there, like all over the place. Actually, very, very funny to see. It's like fire ants and stuff. <clears throat> but no, uh, anyone staying in the path of this hurricane, especially on the Miami side, is uh, a little bit, uh, yeah, unless you have no choice. You know, well, I've got to go to work tomorrow. Well, your place of work might get destroyed if you're anywhere near the ocean. Probably best to evacuate. That would uh, probably be a good suggestion. But yeah, they could get hit hard, and it looks like the storm's going to travel up the coast, probably impact the Carolinas. We might end up getting rain from it uh, later on. Uh, it could happen. Of course, Irene, 
Uh, Hurricane Irene was little more than a, a mild tropical storm when it hit here, but because we don't have a flat state, in a flat state perhaps the flooding is less pronounced here, where almost every village and town is in a valley surrounded by mountains, all that water gets funneled down the mountains. You have enough precipitation, it can wipe uh, a very large proportion of your infrastructure out. We lost so many bridges, so many roads, people's lawns were ripped apart, people got... Uh, the, the face of the Otter Creek and some of these other smaller bodies of water around here permanently changed. The stream out behind my home that I recorded during Hurricane Irene when it was going through as a mild tropical storm, I think it was beginning to degrade to a depression at that point. Uh, right when we were in sort of what would have been the eye of the storm, I went out uh, and lo and behold, the road behind our home completely gone. Uh, water was surging through. I didn't really want, I had to get close enough to record it, but I didn't really want to get that close because <laughs> if you in that, you're dead. It doesn't matter if you're a decent swimmer, uh, unless you can grab, I guess, a passing tree and hope it gets stuck on something you, so you can climb back out uh, against all odds. But uh, there was actually a dead body of one of the people, Some I think it was some 15-year-old kid drowned. And the body wasn't found that far from where I was recording that video. It's a little bit eerie, honestly. It was literally just maybe half a mile up that little stream, which was so swollen the body had come ashore and was, you know, all desiccated and bloated and fucked up by that point. But, uh, yeah, uh, if, if it comes this way, we could have another Irene moment, so that wouldn't be too good. We are in a drought, technically speaking, right now. So we could use the rain, but I'm not sure we need quite that much rain. Uh, it would certainly take care of the water table problem, uh, but it might destroy, you know, all of our infrastructure just like Irene did. I'm not too keen on that. I'd definitely be making videos of it. I'd do a live stream to stay the camera and the microphone out the window and just <laughs> sort of watch the drenching going on. Hey, here, oh, we've got two feet of water on the road. We're on a, a fairly a large hill so we would never get flooded out but the stream yeah <laughs> the road there would be gone it took them six months to rebuild all that crap can't even imagine how florida is going to be impacted i remember the last big storm that went through the carolinas and completely flooded out a lot of areas this could be uh, far worse i i believe it's still at a category three but even a category two storm uh, impacting there can cause damage it's been some time since they had anything significant hit florida Actually, I remember, I think it was back in the 90s, it was like, I just assumed it was normal for hurricanes to constantly impact the southeast. And for the last few years, it's been pretty quiet. And some storms that go down across Mexico, maybe across Texas, or on the other side in the Pacific, uh, and less happening necessarily in the Caribbean. But we'll see what happens. Hopefully the damage will be limited. But I wouldn't expect it to. Uh, it's a strong storm, and people there will always be people who are not prepared and then they criticize others uh, thereafter for their own lack of preparation. It's actually very sad to see how stupid some of these people are. If you're in the area that's going to be impacted, you're, you should be gone by now. What are you waiting for? Pack up and take a vacation if you can. Go panhandle or something. You know, Not in Florida. I think it's illegal there. Go to Mississippi or something. Nobody cares. That's about all. Peace out.